Kermit! Kermit, you're late. It's time to start the... Kermit? Oh, dear. Uh, uh, it's okay. I'll just do whatever Kermit would do if he were here. Now, uh, if he were here, he would have me hit the remote button, and then up would come a great opening. So, uh... Uh, uh, I can do that without Kermit. Uh, so here it comes, a classic, meaningful piece of entertainment. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the light. It's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show tonight. It's time to put on makeup, it's time to dress up right, it's time to raise the curtain on the Muppet Show tonight. Kermit! Oh dear! Oh! Gee, I was kind of enjoying that. Do winter, do circus. and welcome to the show. <laughs> Was that you? Oh, it must be Jojo. Hey, come on. Here's evening paper, sir. <laughs> well, thanks, Jojo. But aren't you supposed to quit work at five? Yes, sir. But you hired me as a handyman. A uh, handy dog. Oh, right. So I try to be handy, sir. Mm. On show days, I stay late. What if something went wrong with the show? Not like, for instance, a dog comes running onto the set just as we're beginning? Did I miss something there, sir? Was there a tone of wit or irony? Jojo, what is it you want? Oh, you outguessed me again, sir. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. How do the Muppets work? Well, by an astounding coincidence, you've asked exactly the right question. Because tonight we're going to go behind the scenes. She just keeps on rolling along with me. I got my friends and I got my song. Tonight we'll reveal it all, the secrets of the Muppets. Is that okay with you, Kermit? Uh, it's fine with me, Chief. In fact, it could be fun. Oh, good. Well, Jojo and I will get ready. Mm -hmm. Kermit, did I hear Jim say that he wants us to reveal some of our secrets? Uh, no, I think he said all of our secrets. Oh. Uh, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, I admit it. Sometimes, late at night, when I'm all alone, I wash my socks in club soda to make my feet fizz. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. And so, tonight we're revealing the secrets of the Muppets. Jojo, where shall we begin? Gosh, Mr. H, I hardly know. I mean, the Muppets do so many different things. <laughs>
start somewhere. Okay. How about this room? Okay. What would you like to know about it? Just about everything, sir. I mean, frankly, Mr. H, it's sort of indescribable. Well, that's because it doesn't actually exist. Because it doesn't actually exist. Beg pardon, sir? Well, you see, we're not standing in this set. We're standing in this set. Hey, take it easy. The lion hates it when I do that. No wonder, sir. I can describe this room now. Dull describes it. Mm. Boring describes it. Not to mention blue. But let me show you how we go from this to this. Like any other set, this one began with drawings. What's kind of fun here is if you have, you know, this is air and this is water, and you can completely reverse that. You could have, you could have uh, birds down here in the water, you know, <laughs> swimming along, and you could have fish uh, flying through up here in, in space. I think the fact is that you can actually do almost anything in a computer. Right, right. right. Okay. I think one of the things that, that we've done is retain this sense of the, of the classical Roman, almost Colosseum-like archway in the back. Right. There's this this really marvelous. It's, it's become almost more gothic. But and instead of handing the drawings to a crew of carpenters, we gave it to a bunch of computer animators. They built a three-dimensional version of the room inside a computer. Here's the room when it was under construction. So now that room exists in the computer. And Jojo and the lion and I exist in this blue set. Now the set is painted blue because we can adjust the cameras so they can't see blue. Then we can replace the blue with computer animation. This is called matting, by the way. Now we're all matted into the room. Hey, wait, wait a second. I have to get down from here. Come back. Good. Now I can make my entrance like I do in every show. So that's matting. Doesn't that just wag your tail, folks? The only thing I have to be careful of is my wardrobe. Now look what happens if I wear a bright blue tie in my room. See? I can see right through you, Mr. H. Exactly. By the way, you know that control room where Kermit the Frog works? What about it? Well, we call that Muppet Central, and it's done exactly the same way. It doesn't really exist either. What, what is he talking about? That's complete nonsense. What did I tell you? Boss is no longer driving with a full tank. But how can he say that Muppet Central doesn't exist? <clears throat> See? Doesn't that sound real? Sure. Now, the banging on the walls is sound effects. That's added later. It's called post-production. Actually, these pictures on the monitors are added later, too. I'm starting to understand, Mr. H. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not true. I just hit the wall. Yeah. Hi, guys. What's happening? The wall. Oh, honey, we're watching TV. Uh, is this the news? As interesting as this is, sir, it's not like talking about the Muppets' real secrets, secrets? is it? Secrets? Do we have secrets? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Oh, all right, everyone. We don't have to listen to this anymore. No. I know what you're asking for, Jojo. And I suppose you'd like me to talk about puppets. Oh, no, this is terrible. Oh, the P word. Oh, are you crazy? Uh, are you trying uh, to ruin us? Don't look, don't look. Don't look in here. Now we're down to it, Mr. H. I really want to know about puppets. OK, Jojo, we'll use you as an example. I wasn't expecting that, sir. I don't want to see this next part. After all, you are a puppet. At least sometimes Jojo's a puppet, and sometimes she's a real dog. Now, this is bamboo. Hey, bamboo. Sit up. Come on, sit up. Sit up. Oh, very good. There you go. Bamboo is the dog that plays Jojo in wide shots. When we decided to use a dog puppet in tonight's show, we started with a casting session for a real dog. Now, we were looking for a cute, intelligent dog, but also one whose looks could be recreated as a puppet. Now, lots of really great dogs just didn't quite fit the bill. Some were too large, some too small, some too fat, some were too trim. But eventually we found bamboo, and then began the process of matching fur and flesh with foam and fabric. Now working with photographs and videotape, puppet builder Ed Christie began by sculpting a foam rubber dog head. Meanwhile, Raleigh Cruson was in charge of building a dog body that would look like the real thing, but work like a puppet. Great care was taken to match the teeth. As work progressed, mechanical rigs were added to give life and movement to the face. Matching the color and texture of the fur turned out to be really tricky. As you can see, bamboo's fur has many shades of brown. 
But at last, everyone was happy, and here you can see Bamboo and Jojo. Mr. Ensign, sir, it's a humiliating experience to watch documentary footage of the making of yourself. Let me show you something, Jojo. Now, over here, I've got one of our simple puppets. And I thought I should demonstrate our usual method of operation. Now, normally, we work standing with the puppet over our head like this. Hello down there. And so that he can tell what's happening, a puppeteer always watches his performance in a television monitor. Oh, I can see your monitor. In a way, the puppeteer becomes an audience to his own performance. You make it seem so simple. Well, it's not always that simple. Sometimes we can get pretty complicated. Here's a look at the making of the Viking production number back on the old Muppet show. Were there any dogs in that, sir? <laughs> closing on the beat and opening with the beat on this hand. So, you're doing... Boy, you know the wholesaler. We want you. We want you. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. Nobody can. Don't worry. like that number. Those were the days. He liked it? But they showed everything. Oh. I saw puppeteers. I saw puppeteers. Ah! I saw puppeteers. Come here, you, Whoa! Come hey, on, but I did here. see puppeteers! I did! <laughs> Our puppet shop is right down over here. How do we get to New York so fast, sir? Well, I thought it would be quicker if we traveled by tape at it. Certainly beats the bus, Mr. H. Well, that's for sure. So this is our New York shop. Wow! Okay? And this is where an awful lot of our stuff is built. This is neat, sir. Here's Tom Newby working on one of our high-tech projects. Hi, Jojo. Hi! What's that? Oh, this is one of our radio control puppets. Wow! A bionic puppet! Wow! Come on, now. Let's see what else is here. Now, you see, Jojo, there's a bunch of other things around here you might recognize. Uh, this is great, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <gasps> woo, 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 woo. Take it easy, Jojo. These are just puppet cats. I'm sorry, sir. Right. Oh, this looks good, Mr. H. Now, hold on there. You see, this is just a puppet sandwich here. Oh, that's a delicious-looking character, sir. Well, thank you very much, Jojo. You're welcome. <laughs> now, here's Joanne Green with a monster puppet. Wow, that's scary. 
Harry. Okay, and over here is puppet builder Jane Gutnick. Wait a minute. Isn't it Gonzo that you're making? It certainly is. But he's an old character. I mean, he's already built. Well, our central family of characters get a lot of hard use, and we have to rebuild them. They just simply wear out. Wear out? I do not wear out. This is an outrage. Uh, actually, Gonzo, this is starting to be fascinating. How can you say that? Like everyone else, I mature, quite gracefully in my case. But to say that I wear out is grotesque. Oh, there are little cracks starting at the corners of your mouth. <sighs> Will you get away from me? So here we are in London to see the Creature Shop, our other workshop. Traveling is exhausting, Mr. H. I don't feel like myself at all. Actually, you're not. The British government has very strict regulations about the importation of animals. So we just brought the hand puppet and hired a different dog. You'll feel better in close-up. You're right, I do, sir. Come on inside and meet the gang. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? You know Jojo? Hi, Jojo. Pleased to meet you, John. So listen, what's new, John? This is the Minotaur that we're working on for our Greek myth series. Uh, this is how he started as a, as a small maquette. Hopefully, it'll look like that when we finish. And Jojo, I'm sure you remember the devil from one of our storytellers. Is he cheating? Well, I am, and I'm still losing. Me too. Certainly. This is Didymus from Labyrinth. And then finally, a 120 foot high monster from the Monster Maker. Oh, Jojo, you should know enough not to be frightened by big puppets. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the Heartless Giant from the Storyteller series, Jojo. Now, it's what we call a full-figure puppet. Now, there's an actor inside here animating the suit, you see? But before he can do that, he has to be padded out and then dressed in very loose-fitting clothes. Extra large shoes and jacket. Then a special head mask, which fits over his own head, is worn. It's made so that his own eyes fit in the openings of the mask, so his eyes become the giant's eyes. Also, by moving his mouth, it operates the mouth of the mask. Now, here he is fully dressed in the studio. Now, all those cables, you see, are operating the expressions of his face. But he still looks normal size. But on the screen, he looks like this. Well, did you get that drum? Now, a large foot and hand had to be made for certain scenes. In fact, the hand had to be big enough to pick up a person. Prince Leo. Yes, it is you. I can see now. Oh, what in the world is that? the Ultra Gorgon. <laughs> Dog, cut that out. Sorry. Actually, JJ, this is the Ultra Gorgon from Monster Maker. Come close. Ah. 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 Why don't you believe in me? I do, I do. Look as close as you like. You're not dreaming now. Look! <laughs> Chancey didn't create me. You did. No. In your dreams, you've got the talent. It's a gift. No! Ah. Oops. Sorry. What do you say? Don't you want to be rich? Famous? No! Coward! Okay, well, hey, listen, John, thank you very much. It's been really a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Okay. Come on, Jojo, let's go.
Hey, Jojo. Huh? Oh! You're the dog from the storyteller! Yeah, of course. Come on, Jojo, you're late for this week's meeting of the OMD. The weekly meeting of what? The OMD, the Organization of Muppet Dogs. I don't believe it! Hi, guys! <laughs> and as president of the OMD, I'd like you all to welcome our newest member, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> now let's hear it from Muppet Dog. Hmm? Do Muppet Dogs need puppy shots? No. Do Muppet Dogs need walks? No. no. Do Muppet Dogs need paper training? No. no. Certainly not. We just need occasional dry cleaning. Come on, Jojo. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta be going. Oh. Gone, gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are. Did you miss us, Lion? Any phone calls? See, it wasn't that easy. And we didn't even have to stand in line to show our passports. Okay, so now you've seen the Muppet workshops. You know, Mr. H, with all those brilliant Muppet builders, it's no wonder the Muppets can do anything. Uh, actually, no, we can't. Oh, save the false modesty, sir. I watch you on television all the time, and I know. Well, you see, you just said it yourself. You watch them on television. This may be one of the major secrets of the Muppets. See, we combine all the tricks of puppetry with all the tricks of film and television. I think we'll need a demonstration of that one, Mr. H. Okay. Let's take one of our regular characters. Say, for example, Gonzo. Gonzo? What about Gonzo? Well, Gonzo doesn't have real hands. Did not have real hands? Wait a minute. That's a ludicrous thing to say. This man is deranged. Of course I have real hands. Look, see? see they're just little bits of fur fabric that are controlled by arm wires. Arm wires? Arm wires? That's ridiculous. Do you see any arm wire? Uh, 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 never mind. So, if we want to have Gonzo do something really simple, say, for example, answer the telephone. Well, this is what we have to do. We have to have him reach over and place his hand on the receiver. Then we can stop tape, attach the hand to the phone, move the camera to another angle, and tape Gonzo picking up the phone. It looks something like this. Hello? And there was the tape edit. Did you notice it? No, I did not. There is no tape edit. I can pick up the phone anytime I want. Ha! <laughs> ah. Hello? You don't say. Hello? You don't say. Hello? You don't say. Who was it? He didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> you really notice the tape edits when you do several in a row. Ah! 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 Gonzo, you know better than that. Never leave the room while your hand is still glued to the telephone. <laughs> We recently did a story called The Song of the Cloud Forest. Tell you what, Jojo, let me take you onto the set and show you some things. Okay. Watch this, folks. These tape edits can let you travel back in time, too. So this is where we shot The Song of the Cloud Forest. Doesn't look much like a forest, Mr. H. This may not, but how about this? In this show, there were no actual sets at all. We shot all of the puppets against black or blue. And then the jungle sets were added later by one of our new tools, an electronic graphic system called the paint box. Now, this system is set up especially to create graphics for television. Using something called a light pen, we could draw the forest right onto the screen. Here, my daughter Cheryl, who was one of the art directors on the show, discusses a shot with computer artist John Simerod. And here, the computer is showing us its library of images that we will combine with puppetry 
to create the final shots. Two, one, action! One of my favorite sequences in the story occurs when Wolf and Milton jump out of a tree. In the studio, the puppeteers watch the monitor to see a rough approximation of the shot. In the editing room, all of these elements were manipulated and combined into the final program. The finished scene looked like this. Come on, let's go. Go where? Well, concentrate. Uh, to the forest floor. I gotta get down there and get my act together. I think you need to talk to your friends, Milton. Good idea. Hang on. I mean, why didn't I see it coming? Here I am five years without a date, and I'm acting like everything's hunky-dory. Oh, uh, don't blame yourself, Milton. It's not a question of blame. I'm just not mentally prepared for extinction. Hey, this is great. It's all done with video effects, right? You think so, huh? No question about it, sir. Oh, you take a character like that from Fraggle Rock, right? Mm -hmm. You got it, Pooch. I'm a doozer. In fact, I'm one of the really important doozers. I'm a bulldozer. <laughs> Ignoring that joke, mm. I shall now explain how that character works. See, he's really not here at all. He's really probably about three feet tall, and he's being photographed whoa. in front of a blue wall. Hey, and hey. then with that... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wrong! Whoa. Doesn't that make you so mad you could chase cars? Pull me down, you big bearded bully. I'm spinning my wheels. Sorry, I'm just trying to make a point here. Yeah. Sometimes the tricks we use aren't film tricks at all. On Fraggle Rock, we had these little tiny guys named Doozers. We also had some great big characters named Gorgs. And this is how we did them. The Gorgs of Fraggle Rock are a remarkable combination of puppetry, mime, and technological wizardry, and they're among the most sophisticated puppets we've ever created. We needed giant characters who had complete freedom of movement and at the same time expressive faces, and we needed to find a way to allow two performers to control the same puppet. The three giant costumes are worn by performers who are skilled in dance and body movement. The costume will permit them to make the oversized, almost slapstick movements required of the characters. Now, when you're wearing one of these gorg heads, it's very difficult for the performer inside to see out. So we devised something we call gorg vision. We have a little tiny television camera that's located here looking out of the gorg's eye. And that transmits a picture that goes down to a monitor that's mounted right in front of the performer's eyeball. Not only does this permit him to see, but it raises his sight line to Gorg's eye height. So when he looks at something, the character's eyes also seem to look at it. Now suited up, the performer inside will create half of the Gorg's performance, the movements of the arms, legs, and the body. The other half of the performance is created by the puppeteers while they operate a specially designed radio remote control, which controls the eyes and mouth of the Gorg's. Now that you know the secrets of the Gorgs, watch as six performers bring their characters to life. Come to my heart, we'll never part. Now is the time for true loving to start. Laughter and loving alive in our hearts. These are the gifts that I give to thee. Gifts from the dear heart of me. The very same mitten-like rig that we use to work the mouths of the giant Gorgs is used to articulate the head, face, and body movements of the tiny doozers. Look at the, look at the chrome on that thing, huh? Look, look at the gears and the wheels and the, the it's just, it's just incredible. I don't care what they say, cause I know where to find my way. It won't be the way they said to go. Uh-uh. Cause I like they say, I just want to find my own way. I'm going the way I've got to go. So show me a way to go, and I'll go free. I hope you'll see that I'm going the way I've got to go. 
Sometimes it's one kind of trick. And sometimes it's another. And sometimes you can't tell which is which. So long now. <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel like your brain has turned to kibbles? Well, don't worry about that dozer, Jojo. I just sent him off to Muppet Central. Please, sir, don't give away the secrets of the Muppets. No, 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 no. Um, sir, it strikes me that revealing the secrets of the Muppets... Hi, Vicky. Ah! How are oh. you? Oh, you surprised me. <laughs> sure. You were surprised I knew your name, right? Well, it's not just that. I I'm just very jumpy tonight. All this talk about electronic effects and arm wires, it's very unsettling and... Oh, digit. Well, what are you doing? Uh, uh, pay no attention to this semi-robotic person on your right. Well, well, what's all this about? Oh, Vicky, I'm learning to uh, work puppets. Uh, Isn't oh, it great? Oh, did you said the P word? Traitor! Listen, Mr. H, can I change the subject? Sure, what is it, Jojo? How do puppets ride bicycles? Ah, well, now you've asked the big one. Because ever since the day the Muppet movie premiered in 1979, people have been asking me to explain how the Muppets ride bicycles. Well, here's Kermit taking his first ever bicycle ride in the Muppet movie. Now, he's a marionette here. That's a puppet that's worked on strings from above. And the marionettist is riding in a crane high overhead. Now, we would constantly intercut this shot with a shot of a hand puppet version of Kermit. And for the hand puppet version, I would actually operate Kermit on a little low rolling dolly. But then when we got to the great Muppet caper, we decided that bicycles were fun for Muppets. So first of all, we did a bicycle shot with just Kermit and Piggy. And we found as soon as we did two bicycles, it was really easy. Because then we didn't have to worry about holding the bicycle up because we could tie the two bicycles together across the axle. And once they were attached together with a stiff rod, then we could just pull both bicycles with a single string. Then we could edit that shot to a shot of Kermit in the foreground, operated as a hand puppet, and Miss Piggy being marionette controlled behind him. So we did several versions of that, and we were constantly intercutting one way of working the character with another way. And that's how we could get a full range of emotions and shots. Now, when we needed to show a whole group of characters, we just tied all the bicycles together with rods. If you look closely, you can see a rod going across between the bicycles. Then we could radio control the mouths of the characters and pull the whole thing along with strings. In this shot, where they're going away from us, the whole rig is being pulled from in front by two big tricycles. You have to look close because they're way down the road there, but one of those is being ridden by my son, Brian. Then we had a sequence where Kermit and Piggy rode around in circles. But that rig was so complicated, you're gonna have to figure that one out for yourself. Why 
Mr. H. You use so many different kinds of tricks. You know, and there are kinds of tricks we haven't even talked about yet. For instance, on The Storyteller, we take John Hurt and turn him into a kind of a half puppet. It's called prosthetic makeup. seen much about our puppeteers yet. What about them? Well, our puppeteers are probably the greatest secret we've got. You jest, sir. <laughs> Not at all. All that technology helps, but the biggest secret of all is that behind the scenes, we've got a team of really great performers. Uh, if you widen the shot for a second, you see, Jojo, you, for instance, are performed by Camille Bonora. You're on! Say something! Hi, Tim. Do you believe it? I never noticed her before. And now let's see some of the performers in Muppet Central. Ooh. That's it. Show's over. Oh, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you can turn off your set now. Uh, go read a book or something. No, no, don't go. I'm going to tell all of our secrets, and we're going to start with Waldo. Waldo? What a fabulous idea. Explaining Waldo will take the rest of the hour. <laughs> Come on out, Waldo. Oh, yes, sir. Waldo reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> you may tell any secret about me you desire. All right. You are a computer-generated graphic. That is correct. Go ahead. Take your best shot. Well, you're manipulated by a puppeteer, mm -hmm. but you only exist as electronic information on a television screen. Mm -hmm. Sticks and stones can't break my bones, and facts will never hurt me. <laughs> I can see that, Waldo. In fact, my life is an open book. <laughs> How does he do that? Well, come on, Jojo, I'll show you. It's time for the next tape edit. So here we are back at Pacific Data Images in Sunnyvale, California. Come on, Jojo. Wow, the world seems so small when you travel this way. Hey, aren't I matted into this shot? I'm getting the hang of this. So, Jojo, do you recall seeing one of these before? on the radio control puppets like the doozers. Well, it's a version of it. But in this case, what we're doing is we're using it to create the picture of Waldo on the computer screen over there. But now, normally, uh, Steve Whitmire, one of our chief puppeteers, is operating this guy. But I'll just do it to demonstrate it. And over here, we have Rex Grignon, who is our computer animator. OK, and what Rex is doing is he's taking these moves that I'm doing with my hand and, and converting it into Waldo on the screen there. See? Neat. And the really great thing is that the computer does it all in real time. As Jim moves his hand around in the puppet, the image of Waldo flies around on the screen, too. So it's like Mr. Henson is working a puppet, but what you get is a moving television picture. Say, listen, Jojo. Have you ever seen a computer graphic sneeze? Uh, no, sir. Well, it's one of the wonderful sights of the world. Uh, let me tell you. Watch, right, watch this. Right. Here we go. <gasps> oh, my goodness. You seem to have sneezed your skin off. Yes, well, I'm sort of a wireframe now. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> there. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. But I do feel compelled, with all due respect, to point out that the picture of you still looks pretty terrible. The image you see on the screen is called a low-resolution picture. It's not really that good, but it's about the best the computer can do in real time. But you see, what we can do is we can take this crummy-looking low-resolution picture, and we can run it through yet another computer, into high resolution, it comes out stunningly beautiful like this. <laughs> Come on, Jojo. <laughs> you know, guys, when we do a two-minute piece with Waldo, it takes the computer 120 hours to create the final picture. This is more than a simple little country dog can comprehend, sir. <laughs> okay. But now that we've talked about Waldo, let's go back to Muppet Central and talk about the rest of the characters. Oh, no, 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 no way. Uh, 
Bring them back, Kermit. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, back in shot, everybody. No. Everybody back in the shot. No, no. We refuse to come in. Not going to come in. No, no absolutely way. Absolutely not. Oh, come on, guys. Uh, uh, come back in. It's Jim's orders. No, Get back in here, everybody. Oh, all right. He's not going to do it, is he? No, he's not. He wouldn't. Yes, yeah, what he if will. he did? Yeah, but what if he doesn't? Well, uh, what if he doesn't? Well, uh, First of all, we'll take away all the computer animation of Muppet Central. And now, we just pull back to see the puppeteers. No, don't do that! Okay. Uh, well, and uh, and here you have it, the main puppeteers of uh, Muppet Television. Yuck. And the one under me is Jim Henson, but you probably already know that. Hi, Jim. I think they do. Hi, Jim. Okay, and then uh, the man with a beard, operating beard, is Mr. Jerry Nelson. Oh, I, I just want to say one. I just, I, I, are you listening? This yeah. is very ultra. <laughs> yeah, beard, but the one thing you got to remember is that the uh, ultra's in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Whatever that, that means. Oh, I hate this. I hate it, I tell you. Uh, and then uh, operating Gonzo is Mr. Dave Gold. Well, the thing to remember here is that my own personality has absolutely nothing to do with this weirdo. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, sure. Yeah. sure, they believe that, Dave. Oh, yeah. Okay, and uh, here with Vicky is Miss Fran Brill. Who understands my every motivation. Uh -huh. I try, Vicky. God knows I try, but she's so unpredictable. <laughs> okay, and over here with uh, Bean Bunny is Mr. Steve Whitmire. Well, Bean Bunny's a lot more comfortable on camera than I am. Yeah, I'm a lot cuter, too. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Okay, and here with, with Leon, Mr. Kevin Clash. Yeah, for the first time, I've gotten Leon's tail in the shot. Oh, yeah, now let's get our tails out of here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, so there you have it, ladies yes. and gentlemen. These are the Muppet Performers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The music just keeps on rolling along Hey, I got my friends and I got my song I'm gonna be living for the rhythm I can't go wrong As long as the music keeps rolling along Come on, pretty mama, and do your thing It's the spirit of the music and the joy it brings I'm gonna kick off my shoes, you know we can't lose As long as the music keeps rolling along mm, I make my own decisions I go by my own rules I gotta live the life I want to I'm no fool there you go. Sometimes muddy water wind up on my path. Let me bother others and I just laugh. Cause every dark night brings me to another day. Rolling along. I'm gonna be living for the rhythm. I can't go wrong as long as the music keeps rolling along. If the spirit of the music and the joy it brings, as long as the music keeps rolling along, come on, little darling, ain't no time to stop. Don't stop. Smile that smile and take us to the top. <laughs> when you get that feeling. There ain't no denying Ooh, You're gonna find your spirit will start flying Yeah, And they are the final secret, because they are the folks behind the fantasy. Everything back to normal, Kermit? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think so, Jim. You know, I think everything is back to normal. I hope so. So do I. I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -mm. Looks normal to me. Mm. Oh, still, I don't dare look down. No, no, listen, we should promise each other to never look down ever again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, gang, it is okay, look. Uh-uh. Yes, no, it is, look, that. it's all right. <gasps> There's no one down there. Wow. There's nothing but floor. <gasps> it was all a bad dream. Yeah. <laughs> yep, Jim, everything's back to normal. Well, that's the way it is around this place. The fantasy always wins. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr.
Mr. Henson, I just want to thank you, sir, for answering all my questions. It's been a real treat for me. Well, it's my pleasure, Jojo. Just one more thing, sir. It's about the white lion. Well, I don't know why he's there, if that's what you're asking. No, no. I was just wondering, sir. Is he a real lion, or is he a puppet? Well, why don't you ask him yourself on the way out? I'll do that, sir. I will indeed. And thank you. Thank you again. But be careful. It's his feeding time. That's our show for tonight. We'll see you again next time. Okay.